Well, what a whirlwind the last couple of months has been. Uh, I would have got this footage up earlier, but unfortunately, uh, life has been extremely busy. Uh, I've had my 40th birthday, as well as Christmas and New Year's, plus getting all our orders out for our customers uh, during this period. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to put up the footage until now. As you would have seen from the teasers I've been putting out, uh, yes, I have managed to shoot another black marlin. This is my fourth black marlin that I've shot since I've been spearfishing all of which I've eaten because I do honestly believe they are a great tasting fish. Uh, you get plenty of meat off the one fish and they are a very fast growing pelagic species. So this fish, uh, about 90, 95 kilos estimated, uh, probably between that three to five year old mark. So as you can tell, you know, it doesn't take them long to get that big. Uh, so very sustainable fish. And when you think about it, uh, marlin fishing happens in almost every country around the world. So obviously if they can build an industry around uh, one particular fish, then it must be a pretty prolific fish. So yeah, this is the fourth black marlin that I've shot. Uh, I've only ever shot four black marlin and I've landed all four. Uh, I've had the opportunity to put shots into several others. However, um, one thing I do honestly believe is you need to make sure of your shot on these big fish because uh, shot placement is key and it is gonna give you the best opportunity to land that fish. Uh, having shot four marlin and now filleted four marlin, uh, I'm pretty familiar with their spine, uh, their bone structure, the makeup of an actual marlin. And the last thing I'm going to mention is the spear gun that I use. So I've been spear fishing now for a number of years, been making aim right guns for over 12 years now. And the double roller uh, we've brought out in a couple of guns. We did the King Venom double roller. We did the Outrage double roller, but the latest gun that we've made, the Vendetta double roller, is by far the best gun that Aimright has ever produced. Um, in the double roller version, it's running 16 mil bands and an 8.5 mil shaft. I'm using it in a 135, which is 135 centimeter, pretty much barrel and muzzle length. Uh, and I find that this is the perfect size for blue water diving. Um, it absolutely packs a punch. Uh, it'll penetrate right through the biggest of fish. And it's definitely something you should consider if you're going to be targeting these big blue water species. Joining me on this trip would be my apprentice Dylan and my father-in-law Steve who would bodie for us. Unfortunately, we could not find a third or fourth diver due to it being midweek. However, with conditions like this, it was hard to pass up the opportunity. As you can tell, the viz was absolutely spectacular and we were absolutely stoked to see some really nice blue water. Uh, the first thing we did was throw a bit of burley down and straight away we had jobbies in the burley trail. Um, Dylan, my apprentice, had never shot one before so I let him have at it as I knew the commotion uh, from him spearing these fish would bring in uh, any predators that were in the area. Our target for the day was actually dogtooth tuna uh, the boys had had a lot of success in recent uh, dives. Um, so yeah, we were loaded up. I actually had a double flopper spear in the Vendetta double roller. Um, normally I would be running uh, a slip tip setup uh, for Marlin. However, with Dogtooth being the main target, I had a double flopper and right there is Mr. Marlin. So he basically came in on the commotion of this job fish. Uh, and right here, you'll see Dylan actually loses the job fish. Marlin comes in and absolutely whales it. And 
you can tell the skill on these fish. It's just absolutely impressive to see him in the water. He hits it once, then twice, and then the third time could have easily swallowed it. I actually made a slight little drop down here on top of him, uh, but as he started moving away, I just floated back to the surface, didn't want to spook this fish in any way. And I was probably lucky that uh, it was just me and Dylan in the water because I was actually able to remain extremely patient, float back to the surface um, and not have any other diver, I guess, chasing the fish away on the surface. It's definitely a common thing that does happen, uh, unfortunately, but hey, you know, the excitement levels are through the roof. You'll see the marlin actually comes back in underneath me here. Um, and you'll see if you can see it uh, there. So what I do is I chuck the flasher um, and what I want is I want this flasher to start sinking down to get this marlin's attention. You'll see he's just swimming away there and uh, I don't chase him, I don't follow him. Um, Dylan's actually trying to reload his gun amongst all the excitement that he's experiencing. I yell out to the father-in-law, hey marlin at the back of the boat. And then I just wait, I just literally, you can't really tell here, but I'm actually looking under the surface uh, at the marlin and I see that I finally have his attention with the flasher and he starts making an absolute beeline for that flasher. As soon as he turns and does that, I know that this fish is absolutely 100% gonna be mine. So I make another dive, I don't even look, I just go straight for that flasher. Um, here I hit the off switch on the uh, GoPro and luckily I hear the beeps and I know that I have to quickly turn it back on to keep recording. For me, personally, the marlin is the ultimate when it comes to blue water spear fishing. It is the ultimate fish predator and the only fish that kills for fun. Within seconds, I have a number of thoughts going through my head. The first is a rig line check, making sure it's not wrapped around with the butt or my fins. If a marlin was to take a diver down, they'd be drowned within a matter of seconds. As I look up and the marlin makes its way towards me, I remain calm. The gun that I've designed and purpose built for this occasion, I know will surely do its job. I know it will function as it's designed for and that it will live up to the task and perform exactly how I want it to. As the marlin comes in, I aim for center of mass and the largest part of bone in its body. The 8.5 mil shaft enters the spine and rolls this fish over. The fish barely moves. As I swim to the surface, I remain calm, not yahooing, not carrying on. I pass my gun to Dylan to put on the boat. And the reason for this is because I don't count the fish landed until it's on deck. Alrighty, so we're going to speed this next section up. Uh, the first thing I do is throw the flasher back to Steve. Um, don't want to leave any rubbish in the ocean. Um, and I call for uh, another gun to put a second shot in this fish. For those people that have ever shot uh, marlin, um, I have seen a marlin come back to life and drag two people three kilometres out into the middle of the ocean. So I want to make sure that this fish is proper dead uh, and and make sure that we get at least a second spear into it. Um, Steve throws the gun out. I grab the gun, load it. Um, I pass still in the rig line and explain to him that if right here, if the, uh, if the fish takes off, uh, let go of the rig line. So I dive down, get this second shot into the marlin's head. 
and as you can see, it barely moves. Uh, we later figured out that the Marlin had a completely shattered spine. Poor Dylan there goes for the high five. However, um, being uh, me, I don't count a fish until it's literally on the deck of the boat. That's when I'll start cheering and yahooing. Um, so I get this fish to the surface. The first thing I do is I put a knife in its brain and the next, and then straight after that, um, to make sure that this meat is at its absolute finest, I bleed the fish right then and there. Um, and I cut both sides of the gills. So this allows all the blood to drain out of the fish. I think at about this point here, I may have given a little yahoo or, you know, been a little bit stoked um, that I had actually secured this marlin uh, in, in the fashion that I did. Um, poor Steve's on the boat trying to figure out how to operate the GoPro and he's actually filming himself uh, with the GoPro, which was pretty funny. So I might even put a, a little clip up of that now. Got it. <laughs> How do I turn the thing around? Okay, it's looking at me. Okay. Don't flip it around and point the screen at us, Steve. Yeah, like that. Oh, right. Sorry, mate. Yeah. That was pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm so upset about my jobby, but this thing's worth yeah. it. Alrighty, we've been in the water probably two hours. It's actually been a bit quiet. A uh, few rainbow runners on this last spot we just checked. And uh, Dylan shot a jobby. Unfortunately, the jobby got off the spear, but in the process, a marlin has showed up and tried to eat the jobby. Um, I've got some pretty good footage of it trying to eat the jobby. Took off, swam away. Um, I threw a uh, bit of a flasher, uh, which sunk down and then dove down on it. And the marlin just came straight back in and uh, hit it with a double roller and stoned it. So not, not much of a fight. Um, the meat feels nice and soft, uh, which is great. So we're gonna process this now, uh, get it in the cooler and yeah, plenty of marlin for the next couple of months. The yield of meat that you get off a black marlin is quite impressive. I take the bill and the tail home to show the kids and explain to them exactly where their food comes from. The tail goes to the dogs, the bill gets cut off, and the head is used to catch wild pigs, which we then process and eat as well. The bones from the wild pig get turned into crab pot bait. While this may not be everyone's cup of tea, all I can say is it certainly fills my cup and puts food on my table. And at the end of the day, that is all I care about. And that is providing for my family.